Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. We're here to make some potassium carbonate. Uh, we're going to start out with this Pequa Heavy Duty Drain Cleaner. You can get it at Lowe's, any hardware store probably. Um, as you can see from the back, it contains potassium hydroxide. I looked up the MSDS. It says it's 45% potassium hydroxide and 55% water. Now, there's some type of inhibitor in here. Um, corrosion hip inhibitor you could tell because when i pour it out it'll be like a bluish green color that's a iron coordination complex um, and when you heat it up it turns it into like a an iron oxide or what i figured out with that is uh just heat it up first we're gonna get a uh, pyrex dish uh the bigger the better because the better more surface area the easier it will uh, evaporate you know, it should be nice crystal clear if it was only potassium hydroxide. Now, you don't want to superheat this stuff uh, because it does ruin your glass if you superheat it all the time. I basically, I have water heat, uh, forced water, uh, so I have a big radiator that gets real hot instead of a uh, blowing, you know, vent of air. Uh, so I just put the, the thing right on top of the uh, radiator let it sit and then i get some paper towel as you can see i put it over top and when it heats heats up to heat the house it heats the glass and when it doesn't heat the house you know what i mean it turns it cycles uh so it helps it evaporate but it doesn't heat it up too much and uh after i put it on there for about a day what will happen is it'll clear up you can see the next day um it's crystal clear. I mean, uh, I had to move it from the radiator, so it's not, you know, I moved everything around a little bit, so it's a little murky. See, after a couple hours, how it's really clearing up, clear and clear. Uh, but you got that precip. Now, that won't happen unless you heat that up. Uh, and you can see a couple hours later, it's even more clear. I mean, it's water clear. Uh, but if you look at the top, you'll see that there's crap at the bottom. So you can filter that. Um, but I found that no matter how I filter it, it, uh, it seems to go right through the filter, the precip. Uh, so instead I found, I let it sit, don't move it, and, uh, just turkey baster it out of there. Pipette that thing out with a turkey baster. If you stir it up, let it sit a little bit more so you, before you turkey baster it more. And, uh, once you get all that out of there, just set it back on the radiator to heat. And, uh. What I found is a lot of times more precip will happen. Um, so even though the water looks crystal clear, it don't mean it is. And I basically repeat this process. I, and uh, you can see now at the very end there, that's the crap that I couldn't, you know what I mean? I couldn't pip that out. So I put it in a graduated cylinder. Uh, that way it'll, you know, it'll have, it's nice and tall and skinny. And once that clears up, I'll pip at that. Now, what I should have done was pip at the main mother liquor there. Instead, I'm pip at, pipetting this stuff that's kind of crappy. I should have done that last. But the point is, filter everything. Uh, now you got it down to, you know, just a little bit of particles. You can really filter it out. And it'll show because when you put it back onto the radi radiator or your heat source, uh, it won't come back. You won't have no more precip. You'll just have pure... Uh, clear liquid you can see there that's after about three or four weeks or whatever and uh, stuff's floating in the in it and it's settled at the bottom it's climbing up the sides and that's it you just got to keep waiting keep waiting till that liquid gets down to just a little bit and then uh, filter it out now, this is like slush right here I just want you to check out these crystals Well, you can see I got the crystals up in here, and it's already starting to drip because, like I said, it was like slush, like ice slush. Uh, I got to I greased my joint because I don't want to – I broke so many of them trying to get the hose back off. I learned grease it every time. <laughs> Push down on it. I got a little bit of ice water. I'm gonna dump in. What should, what should a little bit? I'll, I'll let the pump run for about 10 minutes. I probably should have let it run for 20, 30 minutes. Dry it out. You can see at the bottom there, 
There's some liquid. I would actually recrystallize this too and put it in a separate batch called somewhat pure. There's no sense wasting it. No when you have an experiment that you're choosing for something where the impurities won't matter. So I got a new dish here, nice and clean. Well, somewhat. I'll spread it around. I just threw them in the oven, turned it on for a little bit, and I let them dry out there, let the pilot light do the rest, maybe even put them on a radiator. But anyway, some kind of heat source to get it dry. Uh, and here's a great tip for any home chemist. Uh, instead of buying a bottle or whatever to put it in, you can take your old bottle, wash it out, let it dry, and then you can store your stuff in there. That way you know it's not going to eat through it. And it's, uh, it's a nice free bottle, you know what I'm saying? Relabel it, saying 100%. There you go. All right, now if you want to do this experiment fast or you don't have forced water heat, um, you can always get a pan like this, a metal pan that's nice and deep. Get some toothpicks or some uh, popsicle sticks, whatever, pencils, and stick them in between your glass and your metal, right? Put it right in there and then fill this metal part up with water. And that way you can heat the pan without heating the glass directly. And just cycle it on and off like my heater would do, my furnace. You know what I mean? Put Turn this on and heat the water up in the pan to almost boiling and keep it there for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes and then turn it off for an hour or two or something like that. And then do it again. Just keep doing that, re recycling it until hopefully a day later or two, it will break down that organometallic complex. I tried heating this directly and just boiling it, and I'd boiled it for hours. It didn't really do anything. Um, so it is about heat and time. You just have to give it the time to do it. Like I said, that usually takes me about, when I put it on the furnace, it'd take between 12 and 24 hours, and it would it would break it down. And then that also, once you get that broken down, puts it into bigger chunks if you if you heat it, you know what I mean? And keep it on the heat until it all like coagulates into one chunk almost. Um, that way when you pip at it out, it's easier. It doesn't, uh, push the dust particles back up as easy as it would as if they're not coagulated like that. So once you get your organ, and you want a nice flat pan because you want the carbon dioxide. That's what's happening here. The carbon dioxide, it, you know, you always have some in water as long as the atmosphere is, is, you know, it's open to the atmosphere. And so that carbon dioxide reacts with the potassium hydroxide to make the potassium carbonate. So you want this open uh, so the carbon dioxide can get in as it's being used, um, or it can be absorbed into the water easier. Then once you've got your clear liquid, uh, you got two things you can do. You can do like I did and just let it sit there until you know a couple of weeks later, it'll all be turned just by the atmosphere. You know, the more it uses and reacts, the less is in the water, so the water can absorb more carbon dioxide. Then that carbon dioxide reacts. Now there's less in the water, and it's a never-ending cycle until you're done making the carbon, uh, the potassium carbonate. <clears throat> but if you want to speed this reaction up, here's what you do. All right, I want you to see inside the test tube, I have baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. In this thing here, I have a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. And uh, this is how you test for carbon dioxide, by the way. Um, I'm gonna heat this up and it's gonna release carbon dioxide into there. Now, if I had potassium hydroxide in there and I bubble this CO2 in, it's the same as the atmosphere bubbling it in, but I'm doing it at a faster rate. Now, I'm not gonna do it with potassium hydroxide and show you because it doesn't show anything. The potassium carbonate is pretty uh, soluble, but calcium carbonate is not very soluble. So when I bubble the CO2 through it, you'll actually see the precip coming out. So you can see what I'm talking about. And the formation of calcium carbonate will, you know, come about. I want you to think about what I'm doing here. I'm just bubbling in carbon dioxide. That's an oxide. You know, that's how you make a lot of acids. You you, you can pump, uh, like, uh, 
NO2 in and into water and you get nitrogen, ni nitric acid, you pump the SO3 into water, you get uh, sulfuric acid, etc. Well, I'm just bubbling CO2 into water, so what am I going to get? I'm going to get carb carbonic acid, H2CO3. Uh, What's inside there? We have calcium hydroxide in there, and we're making uh, carbonic acid. And what do you get when you add an acid in the base? You get salt water. So we're going to get uh, calcium carbonate, a salt. So how much sodium bicarbonate do you need? Well, it depends on how much potassium hydroxide you start with. Okay. These are your molar weights, grams per mole for each one of these, see? Now, if you have 56 grams of potassium hydroxide, that means you have one mole, right? And according to this formula, one mole needs a half a mole of carbon dioxide to make your potassium carbonate. Now, how do you get a half a mole? Well, up here you can see half a mole. You get it by taking sodium bicarbonate and you heat it greater than 80 degrees Celsius. As you saw, we heated it with a flame, so there's no problem on that. You know it's going to be above 80. Um, and one mole of that will give you a half a mole of the carbon dioxide. And that's what you need if you have 56 grams, right? So I would need a whole mole of this. And a mole of this is 84 grams. See, you need a and I got a question mark because there's more to that. Um, but for the reaction itself, that's what you need. So how much are you going to make? 66 grams. Because as you can see, one mole, which is what we have, will make a half a mole of the potassium carbonate, which is 138 grams. We divide that by two, though, because we're only making a half a mole. That's 66 grams. Now, what I'm talking about is why I got a question mark here is because your apparatus takes up some space. You know what I mean? There's air in your apparatus. It needs to be pushed out first, and then the carbon dioxide will be stuck in there. So that's, you need to figure that out. And another thing is, is not when you bubble a gas into a reaction solution, that some, of the, some of the gas is going to escape. It's just going to come right out of the solution. It's a gas. So you have to take into consideration that. We don't have to take into consideration that because we heated it up and, you know, some of it already reacted. You know what I mean? So we don't have to worry about that. But I right, know this is what I'm talking about. A standard temperature pressure, STP. Your gas is going any gas. I don't care what, what gas it is. It's going to take up 22.4 liters per mole approximately. All right. Now, I divided this by five, and it gives me 4.8 liters. The reason I did that is because your apparatus is not going to be that big. But it could be. Who, what do I know? One-fifth of a mole, because we divided by five, it takes up 4.8 liters, okay? Now, our apparatus is not going to be that big, but could be. Who knows? Uh, but let's just say it is. So that means we need one-fifth of a mole of gas, of CO2 gas, will only fill up the container. It won't even get into the reaction vessel. It'll just be pushing the air in. So we have to take that into consideration. One-fifth of a mole is what we need. So one-fifth of a mole of that, see, 84 divided by 5 equals 21 grams. We need to add in an extra 21 grams. That 21 grams will only move the air into the reaction uh, solution and fill up everything else with CO2. Now, the rest of the sodium bicarbonate that we put in, it will push the CO2 in, and now it'll start the reaction going. Now, all we got to do is take into consideration the fact that some of the gas is not going to react. It's just going to go out into the atmosphere or through your bub bubbler. And this is just a guess. I'm just telling you what I do. I'm not telling you what's correct. I'm just saying this is my guess. When I'm bubbling in a quarter mole of gas, I will make an extra tenth of a mole. So I will make 0.2 or 0.35 moles, even though I only need 0.25. So whatever I need for the reaction, I take that times 1.5. So I'd get one and a half is 1.5. Always remember, science is great.